More than 5,000 women and girls from the Yazidi sect in northern Iraq are being held as slaves by Islamic State. Many of them have been traded as wives for militants and are repeatedly raped. A very few have managed to escape and their stories are harrowing. But there's been almost no attention to this story and one Yazidi woman is now trying to change that by mounting a campaign for their release. Pari Ibrahim spoke to me earlier and I started by asking her what exactly has happened to these women and girls. The girls are being sold, sold to uh, Arab men, uh, uh, sold as sex slaves. Also, uh, these girls uh, have to convert to Islam and have the choice to marry uh, ISIS men or being raped or being sold as sex slaves. And you yourself have not yet met the, some of the Yazidi women who have escaped, but I understand yeah. that your brother has done. Yeah, my brother went from uh, the Netherlands to uh, Sinjar and before he went to uh, fight with the Yazidi force he uh, uh, went to uh, some of these Yazidi girls who could, fled, uh, could flee ISIS and uh, it is horrible to hear the stories. Uh, they say they're being raped and they're ashamed to even talk about these things. Um, abused and uh, yeah, all very horrible stories and the world is a little bit silent about these things and this should be uh, front, front page news every day. Parry, when your brother met the, the women who had escaped, were they are they all grown women or are some of them younger? Are they Are they teenagers as well? No, young, young girls, uh, 18, 20. And these are girls who had not been married before, so they no. were taken up and sold effectively yeah. into marriage? Not, not married, not married, so uh, virgin. And do we know, Pari, obviously there's very little news coming out of northern Iraq and Syria because it's so dangerous for reporters to go there. Do we know what yeah. the situation of these women is today? Are they still, are they alive? Have they been killed? Are they still being held as prisoners? Some of these girls can flee and they are uh, with open arms uh, received by the families again. But uh, many girls are still captured. Uh, we hear uh, stories from Arabs who try to uh, buy these girls and bring them back to the north of Iraq, Kurdistan area, where it's safe. We also hear that there are some of the Kurdistan region government, they are uh, currently trying to uh, buy these girls back. Uh, so they have to pay a ransom basically to Islamic State? Yeah, but not as, um, as uh, Kurds, they, they buy them uh, uh, through Arabs. Arabs buy the girls and bring them uh, back. And why are the Arabs buying them, just to get the cash? Um, it's more because they, ISIS trusts Arabs and uh, that's why they can... So, uh, I mean, it really sounds like a trade in human lives. It sounds like these women are being traded between the Arabs, between Islamic State, and as you said, the world has been far too silent about it. What are you yeah. trying to do to bring attention to this? Well, I try everything, I tr to do everything from the first day. I try to raise awareness uh, through social media, but also uh, we do a lot of demonstrations, uh, shock demonstrations, to uh, show the people what is happening with these girls. Uh, they are being sold on uh, uh, slave markets with uh, chains uh, in their necks, in their on, on their hands. Uh, so it is very... Uh, inhuman. Pari Ibrahim, thank you very much for joining me. Thank you.